What's better than fishing a feisty live bait for a giant fish? I'll tell you guys. It's doing that exact same thing in a location that's so astonishingly beautiful, it doesn't even seem real. The team and I set out on this adventure to experience Costa Rica's legendary Crocodile Bay. And while this adventure's main goal was to catch giants, there was so much more to this breathtaking experience. What's up guys? I am on the tiniest plane of my entire life and we are headed to an epic fishing destination here in Costa Rica and you guys are coming along for the ride. After 45 minutes, we had arrived. We were looking at the Botanica Resort at Crocodile Bay. Much nicer accommodations than a salty fisherman like me is used to staying at. A little awkward getting off. There we go. We made it. Didn't die. Pretty good. Okay, so we have the rest of our crew. This is Big John. Made it, survived. They Let's made go. it. They came in on a different plane, um, but I think their ride was probably more comfortable than ours. Did your rods make it? That's the real question. We're about to find out. I had to take the top off. We know oh, that. He had to take his rod tube completely apart. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. His rod, rod tube is a little bit bigger than mine, so I think mine was good. Welcome, welcome to Puerto Jimenez. So any broken rods? No. No? We, survived. we made it. So we get the first um, hook set in. Yeah, that's that's very fair. <laughs> All of our stuff has made it to and from multiple locations this year. We haven't had any breakage yet, except for me. I broke a rod on a boat, went to Tropic Star, but that's because I fell off the boat and I whacked it on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> After like a two minute ride in the van, we had arrived at the Botanica Resort. This resort is brand new, only been here for about a year. The Crocodile Bay, the campus that we're on, has been around for over 20 years. They greeted us with a delicious ginger lime iced tea. I've never had anything like it. That is delicious. Then it was time to come up with a game plan for the duration of our stay. We sat down with this gentleman here. This is Diego, the director of fishing here at Crocodile Bay. And we kind of discussed our goals, what we wanted to accomplish. Half of our group basically wanted to fish out of kayaks and the other half of us wanted to fish out of the boats, myself being a boat guy. And we just kind of talked through how we were gonna fish, what target species we could expect to catch. And we had a super important job. We had to fill out this little lunch menu, which would determine what was packed for us on each day that we went fishing. A little bit more discussion, and then it was time to go check into our rooms and get ready for a quick afternoon fishing session. When you walk over this bridge, if you, you know, look left and right, there's actually a little river that flows underneath it, kind of a swampy creek. Um, I, I think there's a lot of wildlife actually that uses it as a corridor, so keep your eyes open, you might see something cool. So we just got to our room. Well, this is someone's room. I'm not sure if this is gonna be mine, but this thing's like a full suite. Full kitchen, living room, rooms are that way. This is beautiful. Whoa, they gave us hats? Joking? We just got done putting all our rods together, rigging up, and we took a nice little lunch break. Now we are walking down to the beach where there's like a little river mouth and we're gonna attempt to catch some fish. They have said that there's things like mangrove snapper. Um, I don't know if they're exactly like our mangrove snapper. And there's also things like the black snook that they catch here. So that'd be really, really cool. I've never caught a snook in South America or Central America. Um, it's a slightly different species from what we catch in Florida and they get even bigger. So I'm gonna keep walking down this path. See, uh, see if we can't get lost in the jungle and then hopefully find the fishing spot. So here we 
go. We found something. We found the water. So I think we're in semi in the right place. Um, don't know where Nate and Elias are. They're trying to set up a kayak. So see if we can see them from the dock at least. So here's the game plan right now. Three of us are going to fish land-based and three of us are going to fish on the kayaks. Elias is gonna, you know, see see what he can do on a kayak. I don't really think he's that good at fishing, so we'll see what he pulls in. <laughs> I'm sure you, are not <laughs> you guys are going away on this camera because this is a pain to carry around, but I'll see you in a bit. So we're not allowed to fish at this dock, and I don't know if you guys see it, but there's a snook sitting right there, which will be super dope to catch. He just kind of sunk down. I think he felt us. But he's just like kind of parading on the bottom. You guys could probably see these mangrove snapper here. Um, but we just saw two snook that were easily over 40 inches. Like no joke, some of the biggest snook I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. like actual monsters. Wait. Look, look at that thing. Look, oh my God, Shit. dude. Two. <laughs> There's two. Oh. Well, we were thinking that we might have to walk, but we're actually getting a boat ride to a land-based spot, which is absolutely cheating in terms of land-based fishing but don't tell on me um i think it's still gonna be cool we saw some massive absolutely massive snook at the dock um so there absolutely could be some over here can't fish at the dock those are things are basically like dock pets it'd be kind of like shooting fish in a barrel um not really sportsman like but over here at the river mouth much more natural presentation so hopefully you can find a big snook or something like that over there we made it we are on a, um, what is, what's a good YouTube title? Remote Costa Rican beach fishing for giants. You guys would click on that. This water is a lot clearer than I expected it to be. There's even definitely some little bait and stuff like that, but I have a feeling like if we're gonna get bites, it's gonna be over on this edge. We're working this little river mouth here. Um, super soft sand, I'm actually like, past ankle deep in the sand, can't really get on any high ground. The other half of the group is fishing the same area, but from the kayak. So we're not all having to be crammed up on top of each other land-based, but just kind of seeing what we're doing, you know, it's, or seeing what we can find. Just fishing like little swim baits like this, bunch of different, you know, just overall search lures. We got current, I see bait, like, so, you know, you have to imagine there's definitely some fish around. Whether or not they eat remains to be seen. So I cast it around pretty much anywhere that looked fishy to me, but then I decided that I was gonna trek through all of this brush, thorns and all, and try and find somewhere that looked a little bit more fishy, because we just weren't getting any bites. Came over to this area completely solo, and thought it looked good for a second, waited out, and took a few casts. But sitting there thinking about it, this place is called Crocodile Bay, and it is known for a lot of saltwater crocodiles, so I decided solo, waist deep in murky water probably wasn't the best place to be hanging out, especially if the saltwater crocs are hungry. So I kind of pushed back and thought I found some places on Google Maps that looked fishable, but they pretty much weren't. So I brought, brought me back all the way to the beach, and there just really wasn't that much happening. Okay, well, that was a bust. No bites, just like one or two bumps, and uh, flounder like this big fall on the lure end. So head back and uh, hopefully get them tomorrow. Time to get fishing. Everyone's gearing up, getting on the boats right now. Um, we got the kayak guys going out. We are going to be going out on this Boston Whaler here at the end of the dock and uh, do some inshore fishing today. Inshore in quotations because we're going to go like 20 miles and then fish some like rock structures and stuff like that. Hopefully, targeting some of the near shore species. So, wish us luck. We're going to get up, get geared up, and get out there. So, you guys are using a boat to then fish on a kayak. Is that, am I getting that right? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, the kayaks are on the boat. Why, why don't you just fish on the boat? It's, this doesn't really make much sense. <laughs> yeah, well they're going somewhere 20 miles away from here to then kayak fish. So it makes a little bit more sense logistically to take the kayak out there other than paddling 20 miles. I, I, I think it comes down to a, a, uh, uh, a time efficiency thing of us trying to come out and explore something that might not get fished much, trying to find our own fish, and with a big mystery box of maybe nothing. Yeah. 
though. Who knows? Might as well get put on a thousand fish like a boat guy does. Uh, <laughs> and you can find a hundred. Yeah. Instead it's of trying to find one fish, <laughs> what, what we typically do in the kayak, and we try to catch that one fish, we're gonna try to catch the thousand, go to the thousand fish and put down a ten thousand fish on the way. Beautiful. So we've pushed about a um, hundred yards off of the dock, and we have a giant school of sardines here. Um, we're gonna catch some live bait. I am not scared to use live bait if it means we're going to catch some fish. So I'm going to help Captain Adrian catch some of these baits here real quick. Oh, we got them. Didn't take very long. This isn't. This is a handmade sabiki too, y'all. Not even out of a package or anything. Just gold hooks. I got it. Okay. Okay. Do you have sunscreen in your hand? No. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. John, you're gonna have more fun doing this than anything. So these look very similar to our sardines, but they're a little bit taller. They almost look like a mix of a threadfin herring and a sardine, a Spanish sardine that we catch in the States. But I guarantee they're gonna get eaten. These things look really, really good. Beautiful baits. I'm gonna try to not handle them too much because they do die if you take all the slime off of them. All right, the goal this cast is to catch more than John. That's all it is. And I'm not going to catch any because I said that. <laughs> Negative. We tied. Oh, never mind. They're back there. We got them on. I know you guys can't tell by the, how much this rod's bending, but it's a super stiff rod. I got a couple for sure. Oh my god! What was that? Dolphin maybe? Do you get roosters in here? I'm sure they're gonna be all on the baits. They're gonna follow the bait school. There we go. That's what we call a stringer, John. That one's mega bloody. So there's a thing when you're catching live baits and let's say you hook them in the gills and they get real bloody. Um, you don't want to put those real bloody ones in the live well because number one, they're gonna die and number two, they're gonna pollute that water even though it is recirculating and that's gonna kill a lot of the other baits. So. Handling the baits is very important too. You don't want to have sunscreen on your hands. You don't want to um, handle them too long, take too much slime off of them. Ideally, a lot of time I just use like a little de-hooker and I uh, don't even touch them sometimes. Ooh, got them behind the boat. We continued to fill up the well and even Big John got in on the action. And you guys might hear me making fun of John throughout this video, but trust me, it was all out of love and John was making fun of me just as much as I was making fun of him. I also caught a couple of these blue runners that I threw in the well and this weird looking tropical fish. No clue what it is, so you guys can comment down below and let me know what it is. But then we were off. It was time to get to the fishing grounds. I'm gonna throw some of uh, these guys, 5-0 BKK, inline circles on, uh, get some rods ready for pitch baits. So we just pulled up here to this coastline behind me. Looks beautiful, giant mountainous coastline, and we are slow trolling some live baits now. Hoping to pick up maybe a rooster fish, jack, um, honestly, everything is going to eat a live bait. Uh, I have smallest rod on the boat, um, so anything that picks it up is definitely going to rip some drag, but it should be a ton of fun, and I don't think it's going to take too long to get our first bite. Nice. John just hooked up on one of the light rods. There you go. You did that like a pro, John. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> you're only being nice to me because your camera's on. <laughs> yeah. So John's fish ended up being this little African pompano, and at six foot nine inches tall, John makes any fish look small. But this little guy actually was coming home with us because they are absolutely delicious. Johnny boy is one for one. Ryan is zero for zero. We kept pushing down the coast, and we pulled hook on a couple tiny rooster fish that really just couldn't get the bait in their mouth. And then it was time for us to do something a little different. I elected to try and do a little bit of jigging. Okay, we are actually going to do some jigging now. I got a 200 gram stagger bod here. Gonna cast up current a little bit. Wind picked up. We're in like 280 feet of water. Not really sure if this is going to be enough weight to get me down and stay vertical, but we will see. Ah, 
I don't know if it's a rock. I feel like it's a piece of coral or something. I don't think it's a fish. Well, that was a fish. A little long tail sea bass. Look at that, that's my first fish in Costa Rica right there. Didn't even think I had a fish, thought I had a rock. Well, the way it felt, didn't really have much of a fight to it. But we caught a bunch of these when I was in Panama. We were doing some deep dropping and the captain kept telling us to leave them down there when we would hook up, hoping a grouper would come up and eat them. So the jigging was actually pretty darn slow. So after a couple more drops and no bites, we decided to move back inshore and just kind of slow troll some live baits as we made our way to the next spot. Me, being a little ADHD, I couldn't really just sit there and wait for a bite, so I went up to the front of the boat to just cast some lures. So while I was up there casting, John was patiently waiting in the back of the boat for a bite, and of course he was rewarded for that patience, hooked up to his first rooster fish ever. When I turned back and looked, I saw at least a hundred rooster fish following his. Yeah, dude, there's a 50 hundred. <laughs> They're the size of my popper. And while they didn't want to eat the popper, the other bait rod did get a bite. So I was able to pick it up and fight one of these little bad boys. Oh, we're hooked. One of the other roosters picked this up. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ripping, son. Ripping. Woo. Oh my gosh. Angry little fish. Yeah, it's just a little rooster. It's like. Woo. Woo hoo hoo hoo. While I was finding mine, John landed his. This may have been a small one, but these are such a special fish, and I was super stoked for John to get to see this up close and personal. Wow. Look at that beautiful little fish. Gorgeous one. They're so pretty, man. They are so pretty. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. That is a pretty little rooster. Look at those cones sticking up on the top of him. Only fish like this that I know of, man. Love to see him. Are hard fighters and they get giant. They get up to 70 pounds. We're gonna let this guy go. Come on, buddy. So we got one of these little sardines here. They call them sardines here in Costa Rica. Not exactly like our American sardines. And I'm just gonna take this 7-0 BKK. I'm gonna hook him right through this nostril here. Bam, makes a tiny little hole. I'm gonna flip him out on this light rod. See if we can do something fun. Just cut him in half again. There we go. We are on. Not letting Phil touch the rod. <laughs> What do we got? Whatever it is, smoke the sardine. Little baby head shakes. Oh my gosh, this thing's pissed off. Yep. I feel like this is gonna be a good I don't know. mackerel or a little bonita maybe no it's not come on fish come on up little bonita kibera bait Bam, look at that little guy. We're going offshore today. 
this would be a giant bait but we're not using them right now so maybe tomorrow maybe next time you don't want them right captain or do you want no, them we can we can throw that one here yeah we're gonna stay here i, I was about to ask I was super stoked to troll this bonito because I thought we had a chance of catching something monstrous, but alas, it just ended up getting snagged on the bottom, so nothing really happened with it. John and I kept our smack talk going throughout the day, and uh, I decided to leave it off of most of this video. However, one of the funny things that kept happening is, I guess for backstory, you guys need to know this, John's a shark fishing captain. He takes people shark fishing for a living. And he is always in need of bait. Jacks are one of his favorite baits. And he struggles to get them a lot of the time of year. However, here in Costa Rica, he could not stay away from them. And it killed him to have to release these perfect baits all the time. Because obviously, he can't bring them oh. from Costa Rica back to the United States. You guys see that splash? I don't know if we still have them. I don't think we have them anymore. Dude. So my blue runner is like just getting chased and chased and chased. And then, uh, you know, I just kind of got bored. Oh, there it is, there it is. He just got eaten again. I got bored and I just started cranking him fast on top and then something smoked him. That's what we like to see. Did it get spit out? Dude, it just keeps getting spit out. What is going on? Did I, I must have hooked it too deep. I don't know what's happening, y'all. That's frustrating. Well, the hook might have doubled back in it, maybe. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the hook. What do you think? I was thinking it was a rooster, but I wasn't sure. No, a rooster, they don't have to eat. Yeah. I'm a snapper, man. Something like that. Maybe. Time to go. Yep. With the day getting later and some storms rolling in, it was time to head in. And I'll be honest, I was feeling a little bit disappointed. Felt like I didn't capitalize on some of the opportunities that the fish gave me this day. Uh, well, boys, we made it back before the rain. Yeah. That afternoon thunderstorm is coming. We hear it in the background. I see giant clouds of rain not too far from us. And I'm feeling sprinkles right now, but made it to the dock. Um, we're gonna pack it up and then we have a whole bunch of stuff at the lodge to show you guys. Lodge, hotel, what are we calling it? Resort? Resort. Resort is probably the word that I'm looking for. A whole bunch of stuff at the resort to show you guys. So let's get back. We gotta pack up all this junk and then we'll get back on the dock. John's got the nicest farmer's tan I've ever seen. Now that we were back, I actually asked Diego to show me around and kind of talk about the history of Crocodile Bay, being here for over 20 years. So they started with just a loom here. Now is it 1999? Back in 97, they bought the land. Yeah. Uh, 98, they started building, and he built the first uh, eight rooms. And then they built the reception area, the restaurant, the yeah. bar, and opened up in 99. Right later. Later. Well, yeah, this is the old reception. So this is where it all started. This is what people know Crocodile Bay for. Okay. This right here. Yeah, I mean, I've seen I've seen people post pictures from 19 years ago. Yeah, standing right next right to the door. You know? This is where everybody gets to be greeted when uh -huh. they came in. I will be back there, you know, giving a little kind of a fishing orientation, get them mm -hmm. ready to go. Kind of like you gave us on day yeah. one. This will still be used as a, as a reception, but yeah. not, not a hotel reception. Gotcha. It will be more of a, of a expeditions and activities reception. God. We can move on to, to my favorite place. Yeah. It's the fishing bar. Pretty sweet. You gotta have a fishing bar, right? Yeah. Where the magic happens here. And this will reopen very soon. Yes. We are right. actually on the, on the way to opening this up again. Okay. Uh, it's really important that we get this going. I mean, you know, you're a fisherman. Yeah. Fisherman needs that, that space to come and talk about their day and have yeah. pictures on the wall. It's yeah. probably so. I mean, that's over 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. It's like 25 years yeah. getting up there. Yeah. Let me introduce you guys to Mr. Robin. Mr. Robin Williams, who started the lodge here. It's a great name. Avid fisherman. Yeah. Hardcore fisherman. Uh, he came to the Osa Peninsula back in 97 for the first time. You know how old I was in 97? Three years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the only time I met Mr. Robin yeah. before he passed, uh, I asked him what, what made him choose to pick the Osa Peninsula as mm -hmm. the place he wants to invest his money in and stuff like that. Yeah. He said the first time he ever went out for sailfish, he landed 35 sailfish before 11 o'clock in the morning. 
35, so he oh, said, yeah. I was sold right there and there. You're not you even know? drinking beer yet. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I already got 35 yeah. sales. Seven years ago, they took me out for the first time, and you know, I'm from Florida. Yeah. Florida, we have to take those huge, long runs to get mm -hmm. 600 feet of water. You know? Oh, yeah. Here, we run about maybe about a mile and a half, and we're already in 1,500 feet of water. Yeah. So I was Insane. super amazed by that. I'm like, wait. Are we trolling for billfish five miles away from the yeah. coastline? You know. Mm -hmm. Nice. What is the typical client that you're looking for, or is it a little bit of everyone that comes in? Honestly, the, uh, I've been to to a couple of different fishing lodges. Yeah. And most of them are strictly fishing uh, yeah. operations. Yeah. You know? They don't really offer anything for the families or uh -huh. the wife. Like, you want to come with your wife? And yeah. Let's say your wife is not as an avid fisherman as you mm -hmm. are, and she wants to get into something else. You know, we want to kind of target the outs. You know. The, you know the other other activities yeah. that they can get into now. Okay. So, so we're we're pretty much targeting not only the, the, the true hardcore fisherman that's here to fish, yeah. but we're also you know targeting the fisherman that wants to come with his family and, mm. and have a family vacation. You know, all of the botanica activities. Yes, it makes this place so special. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And again, guys, if you want to win this trip, you can go down, and check the link below, or scan the QR QR code that's on the screen right now. You guys can come check this out. Or if you're interested in just buying a trip, all that information is down below and in the links. Diego, thanks so much, man. Pleasure to have you, man. Yeah, it's awesome. awesome. Thank you. We elected to have dinner outside in the literal rainforest next to a thunderstorm. But man, this was a great time. They had some music, they had an actual DJ. The drinks were phenomenal and the food straight off the menu that we had was absolutely delicious. Great time and it was time to go to sleep and get ready for the next day. Good morning everyone, welcome to day two. We're loading up the offshore boat, got the giant strike ready to go. The kayak team is also ready to go. They, I don't know, I don't know what they're gonna do today. We're going offshore though. And we're gonna try and catch some monster tuna, monster dorado, and uh, anything else that's gonna eat our baits. So we're pulling up to the school of the dolphins. Tuna and dolphins kind of have this symbiotic relationship out here in Central America where they help each other feed. They basically use each other to, you know, corral the bait. Typically, when you see the dolphins jumping, you're gonna find tunas out in front of the dolphins. So you need to position the boat in front of the dolphins and that's where you need to present the lure. So I fished these schools pretty darn hard. We would run the boat over to where there was some type of feeding frenzy. We were mainly seeing dolphins on top, but we definitely knew there were some tunas because we were marking tunas on the depth finder when we got over to these feeding frenzies. So I knew I had to work these things as hard as I could to try and get a bite. The popper didn't seem like it was doing it and just wasn't getting any action on it. So we moved over to another school of dolphins that we saw feeding nearby with more bird activity. Then I cast it a little bit more because I'm really, really stubborn. Finally, I decided, all right, well, if we're marking these tunas down deep, I'm gonna go out and break out the jig rod. So I dropped the jig down and I tried working that one pretty darn hard too. And you know what guys, sometimes it just doesn't happen. The fish just weren't cooperating. So jigged my little heart away. And after about, you know, an hour and a half of trying these things, we decided we we're gonna put out some baits because we knew there were gonna be some fish around. Didn't take very long for us to get a bite. Sailfish on. So while John was fighting his first sailfish, I was dropping back a live bait to see if I could get picked up. But another one of the trollers got eaten, so then I was doubled up and we had two monsters on at once. We got it. Woo! We just been pulling the live baits around for a second because we couldn't get the tunas to come up. And we got a couple bites on all the rods. We got a double header sailfish right now. So now we got to work through clearing the rest of the rods so we uh, don't get mega tangle. John, you see that a lot? Yep. He's going to jump. There he is. That's giant. Have you ever caught a sail before? No. No? 
So it's a lot different. When you're fighting fish of this caliber, especially like when you have a double header, right? Yeah. We have to keep the boat in gear to kind of try and keep both fish tight at the same time. Otherwise, you're very much likely to land one or lose one because one guy will be tight and the other guy will not be. So the captain keeps the fish behind the boat, but it prolongs the fight, it makes the fight for a little bit longer. My sail right now is just kind of sitting tall in the water, sail up kind of sideways, just making me drag, slowly dragging back towards us. He's using that sail to create as much friction through the water as possible. John eventually landed his sail, his first sail and first billfish, I believe. He was absolutely stoked. And again, this dude's giant. He makes all of his fish look really small, but he was so fired up. And this being his first billfish mean he, means he's in for a little bit of a punishment later, but you guys are gonna have to stick around to see that. So now we got John's sail in the water or in the boat. We're coming up on mine. Mine's pretty tired now, but he's actually probably about to jump. So you guys get ready for a little, little action. Right here, getting close. All right. Yeah, this one's might be my biggest. Go that side. That's a huge, huge sailfish. Monster. Look at that beautiful animal, y'all. That is my biggest sailfish of all time. Biggest billfish of all time. Absolutely gorgeous animal. Look at the purples. The purples on that sail are absolutely incredible. We're gonna make sure we get him right, get him revived properly so he can be left to maybe be caught another day. Man, you see this thing. These things are the fastest fish in the ocean, right? They can swim up to 70 miles an hour. But going 70 miles an hour, you need to be able to turn if you're gonna catch some baits. So this sail, when they're going fast, is down for streamline reasons. But then when it needs to turn, it pops this up and it can turn on a dime. It acts like a rudder. Crazy animal, man. Look at that. So if you guys wanna come out here and catch incredible fish of a lifetime like this, remember you can win the trip. Just hit the link in the description or snap or pull out your camera. Check out this little QR code that we got on the screen. You guys can come out here and do this. Been reviving this fish. Gonna get a good release on him. Making sure he's kicking good. And I'm gonna shoot him back down. Woo! There he goes. Beautiful. Let's go. Hey, good work, John. That was incredible. So we talked to the other boats and it just seemed like offshore fishing wasn't really happening. So we decided to move inshore and man, John could not stay away from the jacks. We also popped a couple of random other fish like this trigger fish here, but I decided that I was going to do whatever it took to try and catch some fish. So I dropped jigs, I fished bait. I was just doing whatever I could to get some species in the boat. What you got? A little mackerel action. There we go. A little Sierra mackerel. Pretty much exactly like a Spanish mackerel that you're gonna catch on the East Coast or in the United States. But this guy come home with us for the evening. Crazy teeth on him, he smoked the jig. I just got picked up. Something ate him. Could be a jack, I think. Sleeping on the job. Hooked up on the goggle eye. Something picked it up. As I was reeling it in, because we were going to change spots, and I just felt that line get really tight, so I opened the bale, let it eat, and it finally choked the bait down. 
Kind of feels like a jack to me, but we'll see. What we got? Oh, we got a snapper. That's a yellow snapper. Now it's a sneaker snapper. Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Large snapper. Ready, three, two, one, in the boat. Woo, look at that. There we are, we got our Sabard Snapper, also known as Sneaker Snapper, because supposedly they taste like sneakers. Um, I've never eaten them before, so cannot confirm nor deny that. But I can confirm that they are one of the prettiest fish to look at. Those crazy vertical bars and a real dark red belly with a yellow top. Awesome fish, man. Really like a combination of some type of snapper species and our American sheep's head. If you look at the mouth, it kind of gives me sheep's head vibes because you know that bad boy is munching on crustaceans, barnacles and things like that. But pretty cool looking fish, man. Look, he's all pissed off at us right now. He's got those spines up and working, but it's cool to see. You never know what's gonna eat a live bait. So that was a, that was a fun little fight. We're gonna let him go to be caught another day. Ready? Sorry, that was a big splash. <laughs> We continued to bump from spot to spot and I decided to tie on this tiny little jig. People would call it a micro jig. It's like 60 grams and the smaller presentation a lot of the time can entice a bite when normal size stuff just isn't working. I'm gonna drop the micro jig, a little 60 gram to the bottom. See what happens. There we go. Oh yeah. Woo, pissed off on the small jig. Something decent. Smoke a little 60 gram slow pitch jig. Fun on the little rod, man. Ton of fun on the little rod. Just felt it completely slack up. fish what we got here angry fish whatever it is a little jack cravel action yeah. ready Free swing. cute little jack on the micro jig another shark bait john is gonna just watch swim away okay here we go Another goggle eye going down. I'm gonna put BKK circle hook right through the nose. Oh yeah, on the live bait. Some picked up the live bait. I don't even know if it knows its hook yet. Oh, there it goes. It's waking up. Waking up a little bit. There we go. So while I was fighting this fish, Phil had his drone in the air and he was getting some cool shots, but he decided he needed to land. And this landing did not go according to plan. He has landed this drone a bunch of times, but this time he ended up landing it right into Big John's knee. Um, and there's definitely some expletives, but that was honestly one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Oh, <laughs> I bet that hurt. I bet that hurt. Oh my, dude, look at your leg. Oh my God, drone right to the leg. I'm still hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, oh, it is. Gallo. Got, 
we actually got us a rooster fish you know had the live bait out phil was flying the drone so you know you guys have been watching us from the, watching this from the gopro but uh we got us a decent little rooster fish ate the uh live um live goggle eye that we just kind of had out flat lined not doing much just had it out as an extra bait kind of forgot about it and saw the line scope into the side and was like oh look look at that we actually got a fish and this guy is uh pissed off i actually just loosened the drag slightly because they kind of got soft mouths um it's actually fairly easy to rip the hook out of these guys and all the captains that i fish with in central america typically when we realize it's a rooster we kind of go a little bit easier because they do have that softer mouth right here it's okay in the boat beautiful look at that got that circle hook right in the corner got him exactly where we want him beautiful fish man look at that those cones sticking up they're hard fighters for their size man pound for pound these fish will go up against most very very cool pretty little specimen that we got here and a lot of fun on you know on the spinning rod i'll take that any day of the week like i i think i said it yesterday but the coloration is really unlike any other fish that you will find out here or anywhere i've seen in the world so just extremely unique and i'm very appreciative to get to catch this fish here in costa rica beautiful we're gonna get some water through his gills and get a solid release Never mind. Look at that. So what happens when a drone flies into a giant knee? Why is your knee so big? It wouldn't have hit it otherwise. It was time to head in for dinner, but I was so excited to go back to the dock on this day, more so than I really ever am. And that's because Big John had to do his punishment. Well, I don't know if it's considered a punishment, but it's customary for when you catch your first billfish that you are going for a swim. And your captain in places like this is the one that pushes you in. So John had the pleasure of going a little swim where the saltwater crocodiles live. Ready? Ready. This is because he caught his first sailfish at Crocodile Bay. One, two, three, go! <laughs> After a little coaxing, we convinced the kitchen staff to let us film them cook our dinner. But just to remind you guys, this sport fishing expedition that we're on, you guys can win or you can buy this trip and you get to come experience this Botanica resort, which has been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what's going on guys? We are getting the VIP treatment back here because we're gonna show you guys a little bit of behind the scenes of Botanica. We're back in the kitchen. This is Esteban, Chef Esteban, and he's gonna show you guys some of the stuff that we're gonna be doing with the fish that we caught as well as the kayak group caught. So we have a Sierra mackerel that we caught and the kayak group brought back a bluefin trevally. And they're gonna show us how they would prepare them and this is something that you guys can do if you come on a trip like this and you know you catch a fish, you wanna have it prepared, so. We're gonna just start walking through the preparation from basically the whole fish right so now. This, this one we can try a little bit of sashimi. Yeah, so it's, it's a, a white, smaller it's one. A white sashimi, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then the mackerel, we like to use it as steaks with yeah. steaks. And then, so we just cut it in, in big ones. We put some flour and then we deep fry it. Uh, make some sauces so, to go with it. Okay. And the uh, yak trevally, yeah, for the for this sashimi. So Enrique is filleting 10 times faster than I ever would. It would take me forever to get this thing exactly the way he's doing it right now. You can see the years of experience. Look at that. What do you guys get excited when people bring back? What types of fish is like awesome for you to see? This one is very good. Oh, oh really? Body, yeah. I've never eaten it before. No? no. Uh, yeah, it's very, very nice. Very okay. good fish. Uh, I like the, the micro. I like it fried. No, we get all kind of fish. And yeah, sometimes the white fish, people don't like the sashimi. But I think it's very good. Oh yeah, as I think so. That looks fresh, beautiful. Yeah. That does not look like a jacker belt.
But you can see he's taking the scales off there because mackerel do have these really fine little scales that get everywhere. I probably still have, have some on my hands today and I've already showered and washed my hands a handful of times. This, you can see like the detail that he's going to prepping the fish before he does anything. The kingfish, they get really squishy. So it's like they don't, they don't end up taking or eating as well. But they get giant. They get really, really big ones. And everyone ends up just like, yeah, they end up eating. Yeah. 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 So we also have a yellowfin tuna that one of the other boats caught today. We struck out the Omni yellowfin, but another boat brought one in. So you can kind of see these guys are equipped to do a little bit of everything with a bunch of different fish. They don't know what sashimi is, it's just a raw fish presentation, usually sliced very thinly. I always find it fascinating watching actual culinary professionals, because they pretty much only use one knife, it seems like. You guys use chef's knives, and you don't really see anything else, right? Yeah. Like, you're kind of slicing with the, the grain of the fish mm -hmm. almost, right? Mm -hmm. Does that like help hold it together better? Or yes. It slices better? And uh, depending on the cut you're making, it tastes completely different. Like when you're doing like the fat, the size of the fat, you'll get a completely different flavor too. So this is a soy sauce production that we do here. So you kind of like boil down the soy sauce a little bit? Yeah, we make a mix it with sugar and then we put some other flavors like ginger and onion uh -huh. and... Oh, delicious. I think we tried this the other night and it was very, very good. We have here that's a wasabi paste. There's a, a wasabi mayo. Okay. And then the other one is like avocado sauce. Avocado sauce. Yes. Yeah. Avocado lime. Uh, avocado lime. Uh, sour cream. Sour cream. Sour cream. Yeah, yeah, sour that's, cream. That's sour cream. Avocado. Too. Yes. It's delicious. And we got sesame seeds, peanuts. Um, what are these? Uh, these are uh, microgreens. Microgreens. Um, yeah. You see, it's all about the preparation to get a proper sashimi platter taking care of the fish, slicing it properly, and then having it, obviously this looks more beautiful than anything I would make in my own kitchen. Um, that looks absolutely phenomenal, and I know it's gonna taste phenomenal too. Uh, what we call a tataki. Tataki. You guys know this, this tuna is taunting us because we couldn't find any today, but the other boat was able to find them. amount of sear on the outside. Oh, that's because correct. a pan is gonna cook it way too fast, right? Yeah. So it will be just to sear. Uh, but you can do it, you can also do it with a, with an open flame or in a, in a, in a pan. Yeah. But you're gonna need to move it right away into ice. One water. second, right? Yes. So otherwise you're gonna gonna have like too thick and you just want like to have a different shape on the fish. Oh well a different color on the outside. When you cut it, yeah. So you know it's a shark knife too because the fish is like Hmm. So soy sauce reduction. Soy sauce reduction. Some wasabi mayo. Oh, I know that tastes so good. I've never seen this. 
So this was an easy, a quicker way, an easy way to smoke it. <laughs> so yeah, this uh, the the meat is too thin, so and the fish takes not too long to smoke. So we will do this as a presentation uh, to add a little bit uh, of extra flavor of smokiness. That's a crowd. So this will be the way that we will deliver it into the table for you. So the. Delivers to the table, guest picks it up, smoke goes everywhere. Right. Beautiful. <laughs> this will be in the Woo! middle of the table. <laughs> that was great. Okay. He wanted to give me chopsticks, but I wouldn't let him. <laughs> I'm gonna try it. You can taste the smoke for real. That's amazing. You gonna have one with me? Sure. Look at that. Here. We just have here some flour and we have a mix, of, a blend of the spices that we use for our uh, blacking. That's a secret blend too, they're yeah, not going to tell blend. us that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then we just added a little bit, tiny bit to the, um, the flour. So we, we want a light seasoning for this fish because it's very fresh, so we don't want to ruin all the flavor. Blacking is very, very strong, so we just have to want to take just a little bit of that flavor into the fish. Alright, so basically you have here... Four. No egg wash, no, just no straight egg, on the yes. mackerel. We don't want to add too much flavor and yeah. we don't want to cross, we want the raw fish flavor on it. So now we're gonna um, fry it. I know this is gonna be good. I've never had deep fried mackerel like this. I've steaked mackerel before, put it on the grill and it's really good, but I know just like that simple little butter, it's butter, that simple little flour coating, deep fried at the right temperature by an actual professional, it's gonna be excellent. You can see it start changing the color. Get in there, get in there. It's like to have it like a little bit when it starts changing the color and then you have like a, like a brownish color. That's when I take it out. Something like that and you can see now. It's tender. Just take it out. Put it on some napkin so it removes a little bit of the extra oil. Well, those lines are on orange are on the inside. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Lime that looks like that. Like uh, mixed color? Yeah, the, the orange on the inside. This is very nice. A yeah. very nice one. I call it uh, limon mandarina. Like uh, man, uh, oh, orange. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's everything, right? That's everything, right? That's everything, yes. That looks beautiful. So you have mackerel simple, easy and fresh. That's, I mean, with fresh fish, keeping it simple is the most important thing. Yes. That's, I know that's going to be delicious. Esteban, thank you so much for everything. It's very welcome, pleasure. yeah, pleasure. Yeah, now they're going to kick us out of the kitchen because the real stuff has to happen. <laughs> they have like, what, 120 guests tonight? We have 120 guests. All right. We're going to go out to our table. We'll see you guys there. Here's to not throwing up tomorrow. Excellent. <laughs> Definitely gonna throw up tomorrow. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> uh, we didn't make a I left my rain jacket so in I. the um, yeah, in the boat. Oh. There's umbrellas. We can also scoot the table. So we have course number one. We didn't get to watch Chef cook this up, or whip this up, but he actually made bluefin ceviche as well, which we're getting served with some fresh chips as well. This looks phenomenal. I've never had a ceviche I didn't like, but this is, this is great. And knowing that it was a fish that we caught, makes it even that much better. So, in front of us we have deep fried mackerel um, as well. Um, and then also they're doing like a platter style meats tonight. And they got all sorts of different types of meats that they brought out. I don't even know where to start, but we're all gonna dig in. I do. <laughs> <laughs>